and now we are going to have mr jagannathan uh, he is a scientist jagannathan please uh, be online yes yeah good morning jagannathan please uh, unmute yourself yes good morning kekda can you hear me yes yes welcome welcome yeah just small introduction uh, for all the uh, webinar uh, participants and the facebook fans and followers mr jagannathan is uh, he is a part of ncf saint forest research team at anamalai hill southern western ghats and he is main part of his big lot of research uh, publishing lot of research articles and he is part of citizen science also and uh, he is part of tamil madad the network uh, his website web uh, you can see lot of his achievements he is contributing really contributing for the nature and today he is going to talk about how can your photos help wildlife research and conservation and the importance of citizen science okay and uh, guys be ready sir jagannathan ungaloda stage is yours please carry on can you see my screen yes 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 full screen pannunga ninga so like full idu podunga okay okay thank you good morning everyone and uh, thanks for having me here thanks to ratika and uh, it's glad to be here and um, yeah so i i'm sure many of you are photographers here so i'm i'm pretty sure quite a few uh, or many of you might have known this what is citizen science and how is your uh, photograph can be uh, useful uh, in many ways not just uh, posting uh, in facebook and whatsapp and on your website but also just going beyond that how can it be useful many of you may aware of it uh, so pardon me in case if i'm just repeating it again but i'm just going to uh, going to help um, uh, Uh, telling certain things about how it will be useful as well as a little bit about uh, citizen science so uh, the world is changing uh, every day um, i'm sure all of you are noticing it um, from small to big uh, the so, so science is for everybody it's not just a scientist uh, or a researcher who uh, do research but uh, even a uh, nature enthusiast or any individual who ever interested in in science can contribute so there are various type of uh, citizen science projects are available uh, from astronomy to paleontology but now we are going to talk about um uh, natural science uh, so as i said the world is changing around us so we need uh, it's not only the researcher or a scientist uh, go around and look uh, and uh, document and study things but also any uh, bird watcher or insect watcher or a plant watcher can contribute for science uh, and uh, they can add more value to the research as well uh, and also it's not only the conservationist who uh, have to uh, you know fight for it or uh, for saving any wetland or saving any um, uh, grassland or uh, any habitat but also citizens so it's it's all uh, we have to do everything together so we need more eyes more minds and more hearts to engage the uh, natural heritage of this world yeah so the it's it's not uh, the citizen science do collect information uh, the the volunteers go and uh, collect information and then send it to some kind of web portal through app or something or some photograph they will upload it in the website uh, related to the citizen science uh, related to nature uh, but uh, it's not just that it's not just about contributing an information or contributing a photograph it's about in inquisitiveness of the person uh, it you all people also develop uh, skill and knowledge about what science is about how the data is collected how it is been analyzed and also when you start watching something continuously or uh, uh, photographing something uh, with you start uh, liking uh, liking it uh, the nature or whatever uh, and then you have a concern in case if something happens say for example there is a tree next to your house uh, by the side of the road and you watch it uh, right from your childhood and you take photograph and you take note when it is flowering when it is fruiting and things like that but 
uh, suddenly when the uh, highways department cut that thing, going to cut that uh, tree, you will be concerned. You will be going and uh, talking to them. Don't do this. Uh, so, and also it will give us sense of uh, space. So, the attitude, behavior and everything uh, changes uh, if you uh, engage with nature. Yeah, so the climate change, one of the major thing which we all, um, you know, face now is a climate change. I don't think I need to explain much about it. Uh, one, uh, this is a model which has been, you know, prediction model which has been created uh, by some um, uh, scientists. Uh, as you can see, many of the coastal India is going to go underwater. Many of the islands are going to go and Gujarat is going to be an island soon. Uh, you know, if you don't uh, take uh, further step. Um, uh, towards, uh, you know, uh, uh, destroying the nature. So for doing this, we have to, uh, we, like I said, we need more people, we need more minds and hearts to save the nature. And uh, there are various uh, citizen science projects around the world. I'll be talking mainly about few things, uh, like you can see here, Biodiversity India, eBird, iNaturalist, iPhone Butterfly, and everything, Season Watch, um, and then Wikimedia Commons, Wikipedia. So I'll be talking few of them uh, in detail. So I'll first go with eBird. I like birds. I like watching birds. So uh, in my younger ages, I used to be noting down everything in my field notebook. And then I note down what time I have seen the bird, where I have seen the bird, how far I've walked and all these details. And now we have an app. So from my, uh, from my balcony, or wherever I go for bird watching, I enter everything in the eBird. Um, I also do take notes in, in the app itself and how it is useful. So one of the thing I'll just explain you from my own experience, this is called brown strike in case if you do not know, and you can see the bar chart right under it. It is from the eBird. So I watch this bird every day. Uh, I watch birds every day, uh, 10 to 15 minutes ago I go, whatever I do, it's like, uh, other people do exercise or uh, um, uh, yoga. I do bird watching. Uh, and as you can see, this bird come close to my house somewhere at the end of September and then be here uh, December and then it goes from my house. This is this data is from my house. Yeah. Uh, and then it goes uh, from my from region uh, around first week of May. So I come to know about this only after recording each and every sightings. I did. So each bar indicates one week and uh, you can see some of them are big, some of them are small. Uh, uh, that means that the frequency of uh, occurrence is more uh, during those period and frequency of occurrence is less in some period. And there is a white bar that means it's absent. It doesn't mean that the bird is not there. It means that I have not recorded the bird. Yeah. So, and what people did like me, many people around the world, Watch, watch this bird and then started taking photographs and then uploading it, uh, also just citing even without photographs. And then this is what the result is. This is an animation made by my, uh, my uh, colleague, Ashwin Vishwanathan. And as you can see, just before I play this animation, I'll just explain you. There are two subspecies, which I, I, I'll not go into it, but you can see, you can just consider this as a one species, both dots. Uh, the both uh, color dots green is a brown strike and the other one is Isabelline strike and uh, at the uh, left hand bottom you can see January, February, March, April and there is a frequency of occurrence of this bird like you can see in India uh, this bird is uh, absent during May, June, July, August during our monsoon time but it just uh, comes back in August, September, October the thing is increasing. So while, and all these things done by the citizen science, I'm going to play the video, this animation, you can see now how the pattern changes. You can see that at the end of the year, the bird is all over India and uh, Africa. And then it, and then it uh, goes back. I'll play it again. And then it goes back. Yeah, isn't it beautiful? It's not done by satellite telemetry. It's not done by uh, ta tagging or anything. Uh, they didn't catch the bird. It just by looking at the bird and logging it on that day. You need to have location, uh, time of the day, and then uh, the uh, species. Sometimes, in case if somebody reported this bird during uh, May, June, July, August, 
uh, then uh, the reviewer will come and ask you, have you, are you sure you have really seen this? So there is a, a mechanism that it can, uh, the problem is there in this in the eBird, like in many other um, uh, citizen science projects. So one of the outcome is, is the, uh, is the first of this kind is state of India's birds. Just, uh, it just uh, in Gujarat, it was uh, released uh, by MOEFCC. Uh, and various uh, uh, organizations work uh, towards it. This is the first time India, uh, we, we, we don't know what is the status of the birds. Like we have critically endangered, but, but there are some common birds which are still declining. We don't know, but based on this information, we come to know this. This information is provided by various people. As you can see, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, and uh, across the, you know, Karnataka, uh, and Delhi, and, uh, you know, major cities are, uh, quite a lot of people who are contributed. The yellow dots indicates the uh, the people contributed from this region, but you can still see that there are quite a lot of black blacked out areas. If you are uh, from this place, please do contribute, not just for bird watching, but for in general for nature watching and contribute. If you have any photograph, if you have visited in these places, do upload. It will be very useful. You can fill the gap. Yeah. And one of the major outcome is that, uh, that that website, you should go and take a look. Uh, you can download the uh, report. There is a very nice report is available. And one species, which is, we think it, you know, we thought that it's a widespread species, which is a cotton teal or a cotton pygmy goose, which is declining, strongly declining. And the distribution is very large. And you can go and check out all the other species, which are restricted range species, um, endemic species. Uh, so, this is one example of uh, power of citizen science. Now you can go and tell the authority saying that, look, this species, some, if somebody is uh, killing it or somebody is closing down the, uh, uh, you know, uh, reducing the buffer zone of the any sanctuary, uh, for example, the Vedanangal is going to be, uh, you know, uh, is under threat now. Uh, so then, if we have see, if we have this kind of birds available, then you can see there are bird species which are declining. Who are you to tell this? If somebody asks, well, the community has suggested this. Community has uh, given the information with photographs, without photograph, with notes and everything. So this has to be stopped. So that's the power of uh, citizen science. Yeah. So this is another one example I'm going to give you. Uh, this is a black street wobbler which comes uh, at mid-October and then leaves uh, in April. It's not just about uh, uh, contributing something for science, but also it's a personal uh, bonding you have towards this, uh, uh, you know, birds and animals and stuff. Uh, like every October, mid-October, I'll be anticipating this bird near my house. Uh, it must have reached in other places, but it'll be exciting to see, oh, when I'm going to see this bird, when it's going to come, when it's going to give a call so I can go and record it. So that kind of personal uh, attachment you will have if you keep on watching birds and if you keep on recording them and if you keep on putting them in this kind of public platform, not just keeping it in your notebook or uh, in your hard disk. So this is another interesting example. Uh, they come uh, near my house in September and then go back. Uh, these are uh, gray wagtails, pretty looking birds. So this is another example of how um, Birds are uh, moving seasonally uh, in uh, from uh, migrating uh, seasonally from south to north and north to South America. You can see the June, uh, July, August. They are coming back again. All this done by the citizen science uh, platform eBird. And I would, I would, uh, I would go go. I would really appreciate uh, appreciate and then uh, recommend you to go and take a look at this. And then you need to log in and you need to create uh, it. You cannot just like that upload your photos or sightings. Uh, you can upload your sightings, uh, but the photograph uh, you need to, uh, th there are various methods. I'm not going into detail now. There are various webinar available, how to upload and how to, what are the protocols available, like incidental, like historical. Uh, there is a traveling protocol. There is a stationary protocol. So I'm not going into that, but that you have to go and take a look in various other webinars are available. You can go and check. Bird Count India, um, somebody can type in the chat if you are listening, if you know, if you are familiar with that. Bird Count India URL, uh, there you get a lot of resources about eBird. Yeah, so, so there, if you, have a, if, you, if you have a pretty picture, you can go and take a look. This is the media page. 
uh, of India and just look at this beautiful lot of word images. I will just spend days and days just by watching them, scrolling, scrolling through them. And it's, it's a very nice uh, page. I like it. Not just media, uh, not just images, but also uh, we have audio files. You can record the audio and then put it out there. And then you can, um, you know, put up video as well. Yeah. And uh, you can go to India page. You can go to explore page and then India and then go to the illustrated checklist page. And if you want to go to your particular uh, region, Tamil Nadu or Kerala or Uttar Pradesh or wherever it may be, you can go there. You can, in fact, uh, <clears throat> change the location like here. I am keeping the cursor here. And then go to illustrated checklist. Right now, as you can see, uh, there are... Uh, 1,338 species has been registered there and uh, nearly 1,280 photographs. But uh, th these are 58 species are very uh, rare species, which uh, many of them may not, uh, you know, um, uh, the one or two sightings. Some of the rare species have do have a photograph, but you should go to uh, change the location and then take a look uh, from your uh, region. You can go up to your district. Uh, and then if you don't have anything, please upload. Like for instance, the Vedanangal is under threat. Uh, now, uh, if you have been there, please upload a lot of photos from Vedanangal, but make sure that you are uh, adhering all the protocols, uh, you know, uh, mentioned by the eBird. So these are some of the, uh, you can take a screenshot or you can take a photograph with your mobile if you're watching on your laptop. Uh, these are some of the webinars, I, or I can share it with, uh, um, Radhika, so that you can uh, take it from her later. Uh, so th these are some of the webinars on how to upload photographs. This is done by Ramit Singhal, another finest bird watcher and ornithologist in India. Oh, and so, uh, yeah, we can uh, take these uh, links. Uh, we can share it later. Yeah, we can send the thing later. Yeah. So these are some of the webinars available. You can go and take a look at it. So there is another. I'm moving on to another portal, India Biodiversity Portal. This is another fantastic resource, uh, not just birds, for everything like insects, uh, plants, everything you can go and upload it there. People come and help you in identifying the uh, plants and animals there, in case if you're novice. And uh, yeah, here is the page. Uh, uh, like you can see, like eBird, most are from coastal, uh, you know, Gujarat and coastal, uh, western coast of India and Tamil Nadu and Kerala and northeast and uh, north, but not much in the, you know, uh, Deccan Plateau and except for Hyderabad, I think there are people posting it at Orisha and all these places. It's now if you are from that region, if you have been to that region, do contribute for this kind of, uh, you know, citizen science initiatives from India and elsewhere. So the other thing I move on to is iNaturalist. Uh, I use all of them. Uh, uh, my photographs will be uh, on most of these platforms. Uh, like again, you can see that it's a global uh, thing. You can go and take a look, uh, uh, explore it. Uh, like I uh, like I show you this bonnet macaque. Uh, you can see that uh, these are photographs people put up, and uh, you can see the map. Um, like it occurs mainly in South India, not in North. There is a record just below uh, some river uh, somewhere in um, just above the. Um, Godavari River, oh, that's quite strange. Uh, we need to go and take a look at it. Um, it might, it might be there, never know. Um, yeah, so the other one I would recommend people to go and contribute is Season Watch. Uh, they go and um, record the, the, you don't have to upload the photographs, but you can just watch any tree for five minutes uh, and then upload whether it's fruiting, whether it's flowering, whether it is, um, uh, you know, um, having a tender leaves or not. What do you do with this? This is very important because all these animals and plants are ecological indicators. Uh, so they, the climate change can be predicted from the changes made by these animals and plants. Like for example, if the uh, gray, gray wagtail or a blight street wobbler coming late uh, to my uh, house or uh, le early, leaving very early from my house, that means there is something wrong. So these are the ecological indicators. That's why people are uh, interested in this. That's why scientists are interested in this. Uh, so you can contribute with your photographs and sightings. And uh, this season watch is also having app. So you can take a look and um, contribute. And there is another thing called butterflies of India. It's already a peer reviewed uh, 
um, uh, you know, citizen science project. Uh, there is, like you can see in the tab, uh, there is butterflies of India, there is butter, uh, butterflies of, uh, sorry, odonates of India, moths of India, uh, cicadas of India, uh, but you have to uh, submit your photograph in certain format. Uh, so it's better, uh, you know, instead of just showing it to people boasting about your uh, beautiful photographs and other things, uh, it's also good to uh, put them in this kind of uh, things rather than uh, sometimes we take so many photos and then the hard disk will be full but uh, we you know we just inundated with the information we may not share many of them it may be blurry you may think that oh it's just blur i'm not going to share it but it will be useful for others so it's i would suggest that even if whether it's good or bad it's better you just put it out in these kind of places some you never know you might uh, your hard disk might crash Sorry, I'm, it might be true. I'm sure many of you might be experiencing this. Uh, but if you uploaded it somewhere, it will live longer than uh, living in your hard disk. So now I'll come with a little bit of uh, um, examples. How, uh, like I said, uh, uh, you know, uh, you would have understood that uh, why it is useful to upload photographs. But I'll give you some specific examples. How many of you know Travancore Flying Squirrel? Can you ch chat box? Can you please uh, type? How many of you have heard Travancore flying squirrel? Have seen? No, sir. No. <laughs> Me. Me. Yes. Yes. No. 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 Yeah. Heard. Oh. Okay. Nice. <laughs> but have you ever have you ever put that out? Anyway, you can put your sightings out. Yeah. Yeah. No. So that. Okay, thank you so much. I haven't heard. Okay, so um, yeah, he has seen the photo. <laughs> One person is not eating. <laughs> anyway, so the uh, I'm sure any, many of you know Shekhar Dattatri, right? Yeah, I'm sure many of you. Are, if you are, if you if you don't know, then I think you you wouldn't be a photographer. I I assuming. So one of his photograph, uh, the hornbill was carrying the. Travancore flying squirrel and flying in and he took a photograph and he saw that this looks different and I, I think that's how the species has been rediscovered. So that's one classic example of how photograph can be useful and uh, like I said, you know, the conservation, it, it leads, the research will lead to the conservation. So I'll tell you one example from my own experience. Um, how many of you have seen this? Uh, this is called bee fly. It's a beautiful insect. So there was a time I used to carry only the macro lens. I don't look at anything else. Just uh, shoot all the insects and uh, dragonflies and damselflies. Uh, so during those period, uh, 10 years ago, I took this photo and then I just uploaded this image during this lockdown period in July 16th. Okay. But I've seen this. I took this photo in 2010, October 25th. And then I looked at this. There is a page in iNaturalist. If you click here, it will give you the entire page uh, of this species. It will give you the map. It will give you more information. And when I looked at it, uh, it was interesting. But I didn't bother after that. And one fine day, a person from Sri Lanka just identified it as, I put it as a you know, bee fly. I didn't identify it because I don't know this. So I, when I put it out, one person uh, came and mentioned me, this is called uh, Eukaryonias divis or whatever. So I was interested how this guy got this name. So he also mentioned the, uh, one of the Wikipedia page where this photograph, this species is mentioned there. And also he mentioned the paper, the research paper published based on this image. So I was very surprised. It was amazing. So. Just imagine, just that that photograph was sitting for 10 years in my hard disk. I didn't bother to do anything, but one day I uploaded it somewhere in the citizen science project and somebody find it useful and then identified a name for me. Yeah, it's very, all of us are very interested in finding the, what is it called, right? So this is the paper they have published and this image uh, where I'm keeping the cursor is a female uh, sorry, female female of this uh, insect. And what I put over there is a male. And this one 
found mainly in southern east southeast asian region and recently rediscovered in um, china and you can see many species many sightings are in um, um, sri lanka it doesn't mean that it's not occur anywhere else it's just that people are not uh, even if they see it, they don't take photo even if they take photo they don't upload like me yeah so when i scrolled down i found that there is no uh, wikipedia page for this so i went and created a wikipedia page uh, recently uh, for this so i went to the kadavur uh, the, the j kadavur uh, is a person uh, called uh, uh, you know uh, jeevan jose <clears throat> so this is uh, one of the interesting thing which i found was that <clears throat> the the photo i took is from valparai <clears throat> and 15 Uh, specimens were collected from chinkona that is close to valparai in 1956 and that uh, specimens are sitting in bishop museum just see the connection just because of one photograph which i uploaded in inat somebody came and identified it and i got the knowledge and i came to know so much about this species so just imagine you can have this kind of eureka moments if you upload your photos in many places it's not just for you it's for useful for the scientist as well for everybody so jeevan jose is one of the finest wikipedian <clears throat> you can go and take a look at his wikipedia wikimedia commons pages and he takes amazing photos all his photos are uh, cc cc is uh, creative common i'll talk about that later i don't know how much time i have your yeah, time sir okay half an hour no problem okay <clears throat> but anyway i'll, I'll quickly finish so j kadavur you should go and take a look amazing photographs i'll just uh, some of the i'll took a screenshot of his um um you know pages all photos are amazingly uh, photographed look at this i'll just keep on watching it day and day i won't do any work i'll just watch all his photos fantastic photos everything is in wikimedia commons so you should remember there are two things wikipedia and then wikimedia commons wikipedia take photos from wikimedia commons so if you start an account in wikipedia it uh, it goes for all the other uh, wiki projects as well uh, so it's better if you are a photographer you are only interested in photograph you can upload any photos but remember that it will be only cc that is creative commons so these are these are wikipedia commons i am sure many people would have gone there many people would have visited this place so we started a project wiki project nature and conservation india and uh, please do if you are uh, already uh, contributing for wikimedia projects uh, please just add your name in the category of this project please just take a screenshot or you can uh, i'm sure you can find it in the, uh, on net also this is the first page of this uh, project we have created many people all across india so it the reason for creating this project is see uh, it, imagine you are you have photos but it's all in different different folders in various computers and you won't remember where it is but imagine if all your photos are in one computer and one hard disk and one uh, folder and you sorted it in different categories uh, my wedding photo my uh, whatever a birthday photo uh, and that kind of thing likewise naturalists will do uh, ordinate photo butterfly photo or by dates or by so this is the importance of contributing for this kind of projects everything will be there so why it is useful many of many often uh, people will ask journalists will ask me uh, can i have a photograph of this species because i want to write about it i just give them the link i won't bother and they will sometimes they will uh, say uh, wikimedia commons yeah they they give a, a credit sometimes they won't but it doesn't matter So, so something called quality images if you have a really really good image if you uploaded it you can nominate your your photograph for the quality images and there will be set of people community of people will be uh, a good photograph world class photographers they will be coming and telling you okay this is a good photograph they will vote vote for it and then it will become a quality images and j kadavur uh, that is uh, jeevan jos uh, is has got plenty of quality images all of them are finest images not just important but also good images so since you are uh, for most of us are photographers the first thing is we should remember is that 
uh, it should be ethical. Uh, I don't have to uh, <coughs> explain that. Uh, I'm sure you will know it. You will adhere it. I'm hoping that. Uh, and if you haven't seen this uh, page uh, in the Conservation India, I would really recommend that you go and take a look at it. Beyond the pretty picture, giving back to nature through photography. This is a very useful document prepared by Shekhar Dattatri and Ramki Srinivasan. Uh, and I would really, and there is a document to download as well, conservation photography. What is conservation photography? If you are a beginner, you must go and see that. And there is a Wikipedia page as well about conservation photography. You can take a look. And like I said, please do upload a lot of photographs for Vedanangal because it is under threat. Yeah, you can as a citizen, as a photographer, you can do something about it. Not just uh, tweeting, retweeting, uh, Facebook sharing and WhatsApp sharing. Just go slightly beyond that. Yeah, and I'll talk about the uh, licensing. So people ask me uh, what license you will get. I normally don't bother about licensing. Once you put out in the uh, uh, on net, that means that you know anybody can do anything with it. But still, we can have a little bit of you know um, hold uh, on certain things by doing the doing it in a proper channel. Like sometimes, if I take photograph or by my mobile, it's of no use. Nobody can do anything with it. Even if they do anything with it, I don't care. So for that, I put it as CC zero, no rights reserved. You just go, you do whatever you want with it. And there is something called CC BY. This is the fourth version. And I explain a bit more in a simple words later on. So you can share the image. Others can share the image and you, they can remix it. They can even use it commercially. Uh, like, you know, some of my photographs I uploaded in uh, Wikipedia. Some, I suddenly saw that uh, somebody is selling that photo online. Uh, mentioning that uh, this is taken by blah 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 and then uh, you know this person I was like oh man this is great <laughs> somebody is earning with it it's okay no problem yeah and then if you are particular about no 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 you should not sell it or you should not use it for any uh, business purpose you can put it there as well but people might still do it you cannot stop it but if some uh, ethical person who is doing it okay this person said it's non-commercial so let's not use it and you can use it for various purposes as well. And you can adapt and things like that. And this is called um, share alike. Like for example, if I share it with CC0, if you use it and modify it, you should do the same license, not various other license. Like for example, you cannot change the license. Yeah. And this is no derivative. You cannot do collage. You cannot just uh, Photoshop it. You cannot, uh, you know, if by my if I put my photograph, you cannot make my uh, nose bigger. You know, uh, my uh, uh, beard black color. No, you should not do that. No uh, derivatives. And this is uh, non-commercial share alike. It's a mix of both. So in a nutshell, CC zero. I don't care what you do. You do whatever you want with it. Yeah. And then, like I said. Use it, but mention my name, give credit while doing so, CC by, and CC by NC means use it, mention my name, and don't, main, don't make money out of it. You cannot use it for uh, uh, any other publication or anything, but what I normally do is, I've used uh, Jeevan Joe's photographs. Uh, it is season, some of them may not be, uh, would have mentioned is non-commercial. Um, so what I did, I found out who the person, and I write to them, and I sent a copy of the book or a publication which I do. This is, I told, I tell, I'm being honest. Even though, it, but it's very useful for me. I, I don't find that photo anywhere else. So I have to do this. So this is the one thing I can do for you. So he said, okay, fine, no problem. So this is how you can use it. Be honest with it, even if you do it uh, commercially. And uh, SA, uh, CC by SA is that uh, you have to use, let's say for instance, if I use CC by, and if you're using it for some other person for purpose and then resharing it, you have to use the this same share alike, not anything else. So if you have more uh, doubts about it, you can go to any of these websites and then take a look. I think I'm done with it. I can happy taking questions. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Janadan. It was very informative. Stop telling panikla on whatever. Yeah. Yeah.
and it's very informative then and so many things we, we usually take picture pictures and they will know what to do lot of we have amateur photographers no like balan ji said many people are interested in nature and wildlife and birds and even bugs also so many yeah. photographs are taking taking they don't know what to do uh, they just post in social media like that's it so our viewers and audience today you know what you can do if you have quality images at least it could be useful for someone for scientific purpose or other purpose uh, very informative session uh, we can take questions please type your questions in q and a session because chat mein bahut tarah hai we go i couldn't take chat session yeah uh, say your mail id sir someone is asking your mail id you can type it i uh, the next uh, someone is sl sayani is asking i have nature picture of last 8 years will they be useful yeah well if you upload if you upload in any of the places it will be useful okay yeah and uh, same question on what part of photograph we should mention the license code um while uploading in uh, it depends like for example uh, if you are uploading it in uh, wikimedia commons it will ask you whether it's your photograph or somebody else's you should upload only your photograph and then the next step it will give you options whatever i have told you cc0 cc by all these things it depends on uh, your uh, wish uh, you can upload in it's up to you to decide what license you are going to give okay yeah, yeah. and uh, do you think lakshmi pitamani is asking do you think we need to moderate the number of people visiting forest um where is that question um, there is a q and or a q q and answer session the clear just take oh it's in q and okay okay it's yeah, in q oh i didn't uh, okay okay um okay like me, uh, this is think, uh, who is that person's name let me let me ask you do you think we need to moderate the number of people visiting forest can I answer uh is it related to this session i'm not sorry i'm i'm not maybe uh, yeah comment yeah moderate yeah, i think so, moderation only let me because we can't go no for uh, for example mini safari there is some limitation maybe he is asking uh, like 50 jeeps are allowing for the safari and all for us so if we have to uh, uh, moderate the number of people visiting but i think most of the national park the main income is tourism the in tourism is the main income for the forest that i think we don't uh, know uh, that is the government only has to decide uh, how many people has to go and all no? but it's still limited only it's not many not high or end of uh, safari sir aloi and uh, another question neelam the sahu is asking what is the benefit of the people who have uploaded um benefit for the people uh, you are donating something uh, yes. will you, when you donate uh, will you uh, ask uh, what benefit you get like i'm i feel i feel happy happy <laughs> happy yeah, i feel happy. that you are saying yeah, happiness yeah. yeah your thing is useful somewhere so that's the benefit you get yeah so balaji is asking off late no beds of visiting vedandangal uh, is reducing every year what will be the reason um, maybe uh, i don't know i, yeah, I don't then, for me there is no not much water last year this year also not much water for the nesting colony so it came painted crocodile it came very late balaji maybe we'll hope for the next year that the season will be best for last two three year i am visiting vedandangal jagannathan uh, but uh, last yeah. year was very good this year there is not much uh, nesting uh, in december and all but january it was started little bit because of less water it's not there and uh, what if i am not aware of these pieces is there any option to upload picture as it is i can mention picture data like location time month yes uh, it depends on where you are uploading like for example in uh, india biodiversity portal uh, you can just upload it uh, just like that unknown species or for example if there is a plant species uh, you can just mention it as a plant Uh, you know generic level plant or animal and then somebody will come and tell okay this plant is this this is coconut tree and somebody will tell okay this is a this species of coconut tree something like that or uh, like for example i uploaded the uh, insect photo i just put it as a insect 
Mm. And somebody okay. came and identified it for me. Mm. Uh, so yeah, so you can, it depends on where you're uploading. For example, uh, you can upload it in Wikimedia Commons. I would really recommend. Uh, but the identification won't be, uh, uh, you know, people won't come and ID for you. An iNaturalist, it has got an AI, uh, artificial intelligence. I sh you shouldn't go by that always. But you should try to, even before identify, the reason for taking photograph is that it's not to upload. It's to understand for you and to study and then enjoy. So the next step for you to take a photograph of whatever the organism, uh, I wouldn't suggest people to go and upload it in Facebook. What is this? Uh, mm -hmm. Some people po even post uh, house pair on them. What is this? I think that's not the way it should be. Too late. Right? People should go to the field book, field book, field notebook, and then try to identify. Then there is a joy of identification in, in mm -hmm. self for you. Uh, some species are difficult. I agree. You have to ask. But from common species, try to first make an attempt to identify yourself first and when you can't do it then go to upload in this kind of things you can do ai like for example um, uh, i naturalist will have a um, uh, what do you call uh, the AI, like i said uh, this species is likely to be uh, for you know this genus so then you can select that somebody will come and tell okay this is not that so people will help you but i would suggest that you first try to identify so one person is asking one interesting question. I'll just, I can see that. I'll just answer it. Uh, uh, sir, won't such websites violate sensitive areas? People in large numbers uh, might cause nuisance in name of uh, sporting. Sir. Yes, I completely agree. Yes, there will be a problem. Uh, there are two things to it. I think uh, the same thing is coming in the chat as well. Somebody asked me, what about the sensitive species? I'll answer for both of you. Uh, say, for example, um, you are finding uh, 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 owl species, which is a sensitive species. Uh, people go and hunt it. Uh, you know this is the location of the species. And uh, people might go and hunt it. Some bad photographers go and destroy the bird habitat and then, uh, you know, might even, uh, you know, you know what they do. Uh, so, so, you don't want to, what you can do is, there are, you can do various things. One is, if you take a photograph of that place, uh, from that place, you can delay your posting the photograph. You can just keep it with you, post it after the breeding season, number one, that might help. And also, if it is from this point location, don't give the exact location and, and be honest about it. And you can give it somewhere within certain limit. If you're giving, uh, if you have taken the photo in Nagpur, and if you are giving the uh, location as Delhi, it's of no use. Yeah, you have, but you have to decide whether you can upload this information or not. That you have to decide. This can be done. And in many, uh, many, um, uh, like in eBird, we have something called sensitive species. During certain period and during certain species, the location will not be available. It, it's not available for public. Because these are all sensitive species. And we can mention sometimes with help, location with help also. If something you come, come yeah. across, unless you and public that. or forum posting, you know, location with help. You know, but you don't want to yeah. disclose. That is also you can put. Disclose. Yeah. yeah. Next but person. don't just post it in Facebook or anything and then location disclose because it's of no use. Yes. You have to do it in these platforms which I'm telling you. Yes. That is one. Uh, that is one option. The other thing is, imagine if you don't tell that species occurs there at all, say for example, suddenly Vedandangal is going to be, uh, I mean, I hope that uh, people will fight for it and then the buffer zone will not be reduced. But uh, I hope that uh, in case if you find some interesting species, very rare species or something uh, very interesting species from that location, if you don't tell that at all, you cannot go and tell the authority, look, I have seen this species, it is found in this place so that you have to protect this place. This is an important species. For this, at least for this species, you have to protect it. If you don't tell this, keep it with you, it's of no use. So it has got two, two uh, pros and cons. You have to decide what to do. Yes. Yeah. And the other thing I want to tell you, uh, some, there are some people, naughty people, who just upload photographs and then market it somewhere else. And there are ways to find out uh, because there are experts around there, uh, they will tell this species does occur in this habitat, 
for this reason and they will ask you for a, a raw raw image or a original photograph or something so you shouldn't do that yeah mm -hmm. you have to be honest one of the important thing about citizen science projects are that the scientist and the forum is thinking that the person who is uh, donating their sighting is honest 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 yeah that's very important the trust is very important so you should not bluff. Yeah. Next question. Kartik was asking, Kartik Prakash, should the species like bugs, butterfly, etc. be clicked only in the natural environment as sometimes it has some limitation to take pictures. We might need to capture them in a control setup like studio bus, etc. Especially macro shots. I wouldn't really suggest that. <laughs> there is not a nature at all. No need of a... <laughs> I wouldn't suggest that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You have to go nature. From there you can yeah. take, no problem. Whatever, how much you can take, it's okay. But because yeah. they are not asking us to, to shoot and all, no? Assignment, they are asking us to shoot our photo portfolio. No. For your macro, for your purpose, it's not a, sign, a, a personal, uh, your scientific research you are doing. But still, that also, we don't use uh, the, for a studio setup. You go there and the nature itself you can try as much as possible. That, that is the suggestion I usually give. Okay, and Muthukumar is asking, shall I make slight editing before upload? Yes, yes, you can. Yeah, do. If you are shooting you can raw, beautiful. Yeah. Passing, yes. Uh, uh, Mohammed Vasim Akram is asking, do landscape architects have scope in wildlife conservation? Uh, can we keep it to uh, citizen science and uh, citizen these science, things? Yes, uh, it, can... okay, I'll keep it. Okay, yeah. Uh, yes, Sayan is asking. I am from Delhi and have number of insects picture from various parts of Delhi. Will this be helpful to the community? I am from Delhi and have number of insects. Various... Yes, if you upload them. If, if you, you upload, upload them. Uh, in any of the uh, INAT or uh, um, uh, India Biodiversity Portal, you can have your own page. You can upload all your photos. People will come and identify it for you. And then you can even have a, a patch in INAT and uh, um, in the Biodiversity India Biodiversity Portal, it's all there. You can uh, delineate the, this area. In this area, I've seen this. So yeah, there are various things. It will be useful. One person asking, sir, if I will take Wikipedia, mm. if we will take Wikipedia, we have to cite it, but we should cite the photograph or a web link. You have to do both. both. Mm. Okay, what is your advice, your uh, photographer is interested in conservation? Uh -huh. Please read the uh, um, uh, the the thing which I given uh, you know the by uh, Shekhar Dattatri and Ranki Srinivasan yes, the page I showed you please read that that will be conservation or the you can read the what is your advice of photography interest in conservation we have big article at me in conservation or the I will share the link and uh, from where we can get the useful information to protect ourselves from harmful creatures we have to be safe to expose them throughout. Okay, the harmful creature is, uh, I think, people like you and me. <laughs> yeah, they have to harmful take are human beings. Okay. Harmful yeah. Let's stick to the next. next, yes. next Dimitri is asking uh, Mr. Jagannathan, how can we reach out to you, sir? Uh, my email address is given there. Hmm. So, Ram Balaji is asking, is there any way to monetize the contribution? I don't think so, monetize the contribution. Uh, which one? Uh, Ram Balaji is asking. Anything? Well, I think uh, in I think you can. Uh, like for example, uh, you can ask them if they are going to use. You can be upfront saying that, look, I spent so much money in uh, this trip and travel. Uh, if you are using it, please do. But but make sure that the, the the photograph should be have some kind of you know quality and worth. Uh, say for instance, if I have photographs of some very rare animals and uh, things, but I've just given it freely. Uh, it, but it, it, it depends on other people might want to, uh, you know, earn through it. So there are various ways you can ask them. If somebody is going to use it, you can certainly ask them. See, Barani is asking, in our school, we do bad counting every day. How to upload the data? That's uh, school, uh, which school uh, you are from, if you can uh, tell me, then we can uh, tell you, the, the, I'll just type in the chat box. Um, there is a, oops. 
early bird dot in tamil nadu only with with village or with town okay yeah you can go to this website and then find the email address and then you can uh, just a second i'll just tell you okay sarana is asking hi jagan anna good to see you again and ramdi nagarajan is telling lovely session jagan thank you and janet rani from monar is telling very useful thank you and uh, okay i think right. so i have just pasted the early hyphen bird dot in and uh, you can find the email address from there and then uh, reach out for help uh, for from the various experts over there okay the most of them are typing in the chat also question and answer sections should be in uh, here only okay. okay and sir it's not visible in the chat box okay there we already typed early bird in and out uh, okay. so samrut how do we get a recording of today's session it will be on uh, facebook uh, when you check my facebook it will be there and later on it will be uploaded youtube also you can check again this uh, same, uh, after recording you can see after live you can see the recording it will be there for two three days and uh, yeah guys any more questions uh, ah uh mr uh, i think from kashmir we have one question sakil ahmed uh, mr jaganathan sir have you collected any photograph from kashmir region i have not collected any photo i have never been to kashmir i would yeah, like yeah. to uh, okay <laughs> so other questions say thing okay uh, nicely okay so nicely you are narrating all the relevant questions so nice and uh, dr rajeshagar patel from head the head of the department environment studies mumbai thank you guys thank you uh, is there sir is there any mandatory criteria as camera specification using which we have to take photos to be posted so technical uh, question uh. <laughs> uh, you can answer that yes yes yeah normal camera guys normal camera with normal settings will do there is no such thing the, any exclusive uh, and all is necessary say i think honesty is rule to follow in any work definitely i that's it wait that can you see any question okay uh, gopal srinivasan is asking i was uploading all the pictures i click in a social media but now i came to know where i can uh, see my pictures uh, will be useful thank you sir great thank you kartik uh, any reason why citizen science projects are not very popular in schools and colleges at least around 10 years back very useful to in 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 calculate this is at very early young years now it's popular i think citizen science popular no you have to ask, uh, answer uh, this question jagannathan uh, sorry uh, i didn't get the question where is it uh, i was so, i do to help it kartik prakash sorry okay any reason why citizen projects are not very popular in schools somewhere at least around 10 years back very useful to okay why it's not popular in 10 years many things are not popular in 10 years back uh, yes. only after the social media and everything came uh, 10 years back only but uh, the invent of uh, the using the mobile phone and things like that uh, has really picked up in recent times like uh, most of the e-board has got a app uh, i think 10 years back also there was a there were a couple of uh, citizen science projects um, i think people were uh, counting the bats those days one of the oldest citizen science project is awc okay. the asian water bird, water bird uh, count census those days what people do they go meticulously note down what are the birds are seen they write down what are the threats for that uh, region they write down the species number and they write down everything they type it out sometime in english and then send it via post to bnhs Uh, and they collect everything they type it out and then they send it to uh, wetland international so that's how things were done and but now i feel i think jenadan now because of the internet everyone is uh, you can download app and you can uploading you no know? now yeah. it's very popular people are who are interested it's very popular e bed everything is the app is there before definitely yeah. there is no internet forget about the villages and the, only the met- metro cities we have fast internet so now we think more awareness is there people are more using but still we need more people to involve that's the purpose yeah. of having some webinar like this 
anyway it was a very interesting session uh, jayanathan even i came to know lot of uh, information to use for using wikipedia and all no? it's very lovely to have you and plus uh, for my me also i, I get to know lot of information guys uh, webinar uh, fans uh, webinar participants and my facebook fans and followers hope the session is very useful now you know after taking photograph what is we are going you guys are going to do keep it useful and uh, do it uh, ethically do photograph ethically for macro photography or birding and all without disturbing nest without disturbing any uh, unethical uh, things okay and thank you janar it was a lovely session okay yeah you can thank you so much thanks for listening yeah yes. bye